understand the concept of ownership as in users and groups. That's better. For those of you who do not understand, there will be a link later. So just keep this in mind. Say the ownership and permissions for Joomla. All files and folders must be owned by the, the user, your server, and sender, which must be the same as the FTP user. If it's not, you're on a crap server host, in which case, make sure that all the files are owned by the FTP user, uh, and enable Joomla's FTP layer, but only for the one week it will, help, it will take you until you move to this and post. If you do not do that, you will eventually get hacked, I can guarantee that. Uh, folders need to have 0755 permissions, which means that they can be read and browsed by any <coughs> user, but only written to by the owner. File 0644, which, is, uh, which means that they can be read by any user, they can only be written to by the owner. If you must use 777 permissions, how many of you use 777 permissions anywhere? Okay. Good. Uh, if you think you have to use triple seven permissions, uh, first go to the bathroom, splash some cold water. <laughs> if you are still sure that you have to use triple seven permissions, slap yourself. And if you still cannot find the reason not to use triple seven permissions, please uh, this bit of dot status code on that directory that you have uh, changed its permissions to triple seven. Uh, it will save your path. Um, better yet, scratch all that, use FastCGI. Uh, if you are on a very old server, use SQPHP, which means that its site runs under its own user. So you will not have to deal with any of that. The default permissions will be fine because they will be that. Uh, if this is too much to remember, don't worry. There are two links. In Nakiba Backup's user guide, I have put this information since several years ago. Uh, and I have written a blog post around 2011, which is called Triple Seven the Number of the Beast. I can guarantee there's no religious content and not religious now. Uh, that you can read. It's very funny because I read it five years ago, it's still relevant. People still do that. You don't have to try to, you know, now these huge URLs. There's a sort of URL here. Um, speaking of updates, okay, you've updated all your web software. How about to manage extensions? Um, can someone enumerate what are the kinds of extensions, like their components, modules, plugins? Do you agree that this is the, the list? Templates. <laughs> Templates. Languages. Libraries. Languages, they don't have any files. Except the core language that only has a bit, one bit file. Uh, and packages. Since Joomla 1.6, we have a lot of extensions. And do remember that just because it's a template or a library, it doesn't mean that there is an executable code. There is a lot of executable code. In fact, with most templates, uh, that you get from big template labs, there is more PHP code than in the entire Joomla system itself. <laughs> this is why your sites are slow. That's all that you know. So please make sure that you update everything yesterday. And there is a great resource called the Joomla Vulnerable Extensions List or Joomla VL, where you can see uh, no vulnerabilities and extensions. If an extension is there, it doesn't mean that it's not secure. Both my extensions are there, because as soon as I got a report about security issue, I reported it well, and then published an update. Uh, so always check that list to see if you have a vulnerable version of your extensions. Better yet, update yesterday. If there is an update, the developer published it for a reason. We don't like to go through the release process very often. <coughs> we do that for you. Uh, a favorite thing of mine, think before installing. How many of you know a guy who has downloaded a Joomla extension from an unofficial source? <laughs> <laughs> I can see some people at the back. 
Yeah. How many of you know that this guy has got a hack side? <laughs> yeah, you know why? Uh, the people who publish ex paid extensions for free don't do that for uh, uh, they, do, do, they don't do that for you. They don't do that because they're nice people. In fact, they're very bad people. They do that because they can insert a backdoor. Uh, if you uh, install this free copy of the extension, you also get something else for free. It's like having intercourse with a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> so, do not install something that you download from uh, disreputable sources. Uh, speaking of things that you should not do, you should never ever use FTP. Uh, how many of you use FTP? Okay. How many of you use SFTP? Okay, so this part of the room is the smart people. <laughs> <laughs> I can't possibly see the house going on in the, the good questions. Okay, so the difference between FTP and SFTP. FTP is unencrypted, which means that your username and password are, are sent over the open internet in the clear. It's like taking a postcard, writing your username and password, and sending it to your friend. Anybody who gets hold of the postcard can read it. The same happens with the internet. <coughs> SFTP, on the other hand, is like a stamped sealed envelope that cannot be unsealed by anybody else except the final recipient. So, uh, if in doubt, use the FTP. If you do not have any doubt, use the FTP. <laughs> if you're only given FTP on a certain post, do not use that post. <laughs> Very plain and simple. Uh, okay, the next slide is a bit offensive because we have a few uh, <coughs> but guys, length <coughs> markers. <coughs> Sorry. The password. <laughs> 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 it's offensive, right? Okay. Why does it matter? Holy to be your password cracking machine, Batman. Uh, this nice little master has eight top of the line GPUs. Uh, it costs about, uh, I reckon, uh, uh, 8,000 pounds to assemble. And it can process 300. Uh, sorry, 311.6 billion passes per second. That's 311.6 billion password combinations every second. If all of us started writing those combinations by hand, it would take us all of our lifetimes, many times over, to just write down the combinations this thing tries in one second. So, how strong is your password? Let's see, based on that machine, that it's certainly within uh, the financial capabilities of any semi-serious hacker. If you have a very simple numeric password, uh, you see it's, it's quite long, it's, uh, it, it has eight digits, it's a birthday, it's June's birthday, uh, it would take 0 0.04 picoseconds that a picosec is a billion for the second to crack. Can you consider how small it is? It's like, we can't even start and it's already cracked. How many of you use admin admin? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. That's good. The first time I asked this question, everybody was like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and you're happy about it. <laughs> yeah. So, admin admin, can be cracked in 0 0.20 picoseconds, and that's without using a word list. You know the, the, the most common password for 2015? What was the most common password in use in 2015? Three, four, five, six, seven. No, it was password. <laughs> <laughs> Followed very closely by the super secure password, let me in. <laughs> I don't know. Probably Aladdin has a login everywhere. 
if you try a very long password that looks like line noise, and probably you will not remember it, that's slightly better. It could take 24.3 years to crack. But since the speed of cracking passwords increased by an order of magnitude every four to five years, I would recommend that it would take them about five years to crack, so it's okay. And if you have a super complex password with uh, uh, numbers, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, special symbols, stuff like that, it will take 36 million years. That's a safe password. You think that that password <coughs> is an overkill? It's really not. Since the speed of cracking passwords increases over time, the, th the, the big password that takes now a few million years, in a decade it will take about 100 years to crack, so it's becoming weaker and weaker. Um, so one of the big problems with Joomla up to version 3.1 inclusive was that it used a very old method for storing passwords called MD, solid MD5 <coughs> that was very fast to crack. Since uh, version 3.2, Joomla uses BigCrypt, which is a million times harder to crack. So with today's technology, these passwords, okay, the simple numeric password, the admin admin password, they're crap, don't use them. Uh, the big letters only password is okay so far. A big complicated password, it would take more than the known, uh, than the age of the known universe uh, nine times over. So I think that's quite safe. But how can you remember such a password? Use a password manager. I'm using one password. You can use keypass, lastpass. Last you know pass. the idea. Uh, Always uh, keep a device on your version connected to the password manager, protected by a strong password, so you only need to remember one password in your head. And not admin for that password. <laughs> 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 also, if you think that using words or uh, words cleverly written with numbers instead of letters is, it, is safe, no. It's, uh, you know how most kids were born, because some of them <coughs> bullying was enough. It's the same with using dictionary words for passwords. No, it's not a valid method. Use a password manager. Just remember one complex password. <coughs> how safe is it keeping your, your passwords on, in the cloud? How safe it is? Yeah, like last pass, you know? Yeah. It depends on the password manager. Choose one that strongly encrypts your passwords. If they do not, it's like written, writing them on a sticky note and putting it on your wall. Not very helpful. That's why I said use one of the established password managers. Not the one that uh, your nephew set up over the weekend. It's not going to work. Um, so another thing that Joomla does to keep help Sorry, I, I forgot to say something important. So Joomla 3.2 does a very good job of protecting your passwords. Uh, <coughs> how many of you use sites earlier than Joomla 3.2? Joomla <laughs> <No. laughs> 3.2 and later also does something more to keep you safe. Two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication means that in order to log in, you need something you know and something you have. Something you know is your username and password. Actually, the username, I wouldn't say it's, it's, an, it's an authentication factor. Your username is public. If you think that your username is secret, no. Think again. Mm. Hi, Nicholas. As you were the original author of the two-factor authentication, Gilles, um, would it be possible to change the process by what's that is you? Later, you can ask me later. Okay. <laughs> there is a question section. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, two-factor authentication, something you know, something you have. Something you know, password, something you have, could be. <coughs> uh, Google Authenticator, has anyone, has anyone used Google Authenticator? OK, 
Okay, for those who do not know what <coughs> uh, uh, these uh, devilish machines, the smartphones, uh, have the ability to install applications. One of them is Google Authenticator. It generates a six-digit code that changes every 30 seconds. Uh, so if, if you're trying to log into your site, you have to provide username, password, and this six-digit code. Since it changes every 30 seconds, it means that a hacker, even if they have your, uh, your password, if they have stolen it from you, they will not be able to log in. They would have uh, about, uh, I think it was one in 10,000 chances of being able to log in within that time frame. So, not much. Even better, Joomla supports Ubiki, which is a hardware token that you insert in the USB port of your computer, or if you have an Android phone, you can tap it on the, on the NFC chip. Uh, it generates a very big code that has to be validated through the cloud. Basically, it has to be validated through the computers owned by the Google company that produced those keys. Each one of those codes can only be used once, and it has to be va cryptographically validated, which makes it extremely secure. This is used by banks and um, big organizations like Microsoft. So. I guess it's pretty secure. How many of you have used two-factor authentication with Joomla? Okay. Yeah. It's something that you should enable by default for all of your super users. This way, even if your super users choose an unsafe password, and you know that your clients will do, uh, at least their size will not be too easy for a hacker to learn you. Speaking of <coughs> passwords, how many of you have shared passwords over email? <laughs> it's okay, you can tell me. <laughs> uh -huh. Some secure ticketing systems do that as well. I mean, some Joomla, Joomla oh. they do that. There is regular unencrypted email. How many of you have shared passwords through encrypted email? <laughs> David. Okay. Uh, how many of you have ever shared passwords in a public form? Like public, everyone can read it. <laughs> You'll be surprised we get one of, one of those people every month. Uh, do not do that. If you want to share a password with a developer, we have secure ticketing systems protected by HTTPS and we store everything in our database encrypted. When I tell you, please provide me your login information by applying to the ticket system and you send me an email, I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that my, when you file your <coughs> password, your temporary password, in my ticket system, I'm the only one who can see it. It doesn't travel by email. If you send it by email, anyone on the internet can see it. Because your email is not encrypted. So, next time that you have a developer asking you for a username and password, do check, do they have HTTPS on their site enabled by default? And is the, the ticket or form post private, which means that only you and the developer can see it? If the answer to both questions is yes, provide your username and password through their site. If the answer is no, do not give out your username and password, give it. That's it. Unless you know how to use an encrypted email, in which case you will be in this room. Uh, so, or you will be in this room recording the session right <laughs> uh, Speaking of the usernames and passwords that you're giving to developers, how many of you have provided a developer with a temporary password? How many of you who provided a developer with a temporary password went and deleted that account afterwards? Okay. And how many of you give out your regular username and password? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's like a group therapy. <laughs> so here's the, the thing. 
when you provide a developer with access to your site and your server, always make sure that you give them temporary login and at the end of whatever they are doing, you revoke their access. Either by deleting that account or by completely changing uh, the password and the associated email address. Because if you create a new login for me on your site using my email address and you change my password, I can always reset it. Okay? It has happened with a client. Uh, he asked me to go back in and change my password. No problem, password reset. I was back in. He asked me, how did you do that? <laughs> By knowing how Zoom app works. Mm -hmm. And the reason to remove those temporary user accounts is that even though I'm pretty sure that my site is very secure, there is only a million chance that I will get hacked. And if the hacker gets your regular username for your site, <laughs> he's hit the jackpot. So don't be that guy. Now to the more serious stuff. Always lock down your site. I have uh, a mantra that nothing on my site runs unless I say so. Nothing. If there is a PHP file that wants to run, I have <coughs> to vet it before it is able to run. <coughs> How do I do that? With .htaccess access rules. Uh, there is the master .htaccess access that I have written <coughs> and a very old version, broken version of which is currently in the Joomla documentation and they refuse to change it even though I've told them that it's good whatever. Or you can use admin tools professional which has a much better interface and you don't have uh, to know how .htaccess works. Very importantly, protect your Joomla administration. <coughs> you know what's the easiest way to tell if someone has a Joomla site? <coughs> Slash administrator. Mm -hmm. If you see a Joomla login, you say it's Joomla. This is used in something called a door attack, which means that <laughs> as, a, as a hacker, <coughs> I'm going to go on Google and look for Joomla login. Joomla administrator login. This is the, the title of that page. And I will get all these slash administrator URLs from a lot of sites. So I know that these sites use Joomla. They are potential targets if I ever find a Joomla zero day vulnerability, like hackers did in December, December 2015. Uh, so it's a very good idea to deprive them of that option by protecting your administrator login. There are two ways to do that, either by using .ht access, which is the best method, or by using uh, a secret URL parameter with something like uh, JSecure or uh, what's it called, Caribou, something like that, or other tools. Um, .it's the access is always the best option because uh, you're presented with a, with a login box by your browser. You have to enter a username and password to see the actual Joomla login page. And since this <coughs> is by the web server, it takes uh, uh, hundreds of a millisecond, hundreds of a millisecond to display which means that if someone is trying to actively brute force your uh, backend username and password, and they're trying hundreds of requests every second to with different passwords, they will not be wasting resources on your server. Because you know that every time Joomla displays a page, it is a CPU spike. It's an application for us to boot up and uh, figure out if you're logged in or not, and uh, render HTML and send it to, back to the browser. So you don't want that to happen. The best way to protect your administrator is using the access. And just train your clients <coughs> that they need to enter two logins, two different logins to enter the packet. And of course, since you're running a site, Arbor App, uh, use a, a web application firewall which can either be a component like Admin Tools or Ars or uh, OSC Anti-Hacker, or it can be a third-party service like uh, uh, Sukuri, for example. Basically, all those tools are designed to, so that they monitor the incoming requests 
from your visitors and try to figure out if they're legitimate or if it's a hacker trying to do something nasty. <coughs> In the latter case, they're going to automatically block those malicious visitors. Uh, just, I, I remember something, but put the slide here. How many of you are using IP blocking manually? Don't, don't, don't do manual IP blocking. The chance is that you're able to stop an attack by manually IP blocking something permanently are exactly him. Any serious attacker will recycle his IP address. By the time that you see he was attacking you, he's changed his IP address. There's no point. Let these tools handle IP blocking automatically. This is what they're designed to do. A very important thing for keeping your site safe is backups. <coughs> And when I say backups, I don't mean whenever I remember I will log into my site and click on the button to back it up and leave the backup on the server. If you do that, mm -hmm. it says good there's no backup. If you're hacked and your backup is on the server, <coughs> any hacker with half a brain would delete the backup. In which case, what do you have? No backup. When I say backups, I mean that's been fully automated, regularly tested. Offsite backups. How many of you take automated backups? How many of you test those automated backups regularly? How many of you have these automated backups fully tested uh, into the cloud? Okay. Both local and on the Both locally on the server and on the cloud. Local on the server is as good as having no backup, so I don't even count it. <laughs> Uh, locally in the server, so basically you will need a backup either when you get hacked or your server goes down. In which case, having the backup on the server is of no use. You only need it locally on the <coughs> server if, for, for the third use case, which is my client screwed up. Yeah, exactly. And they call you frantically, my site is down. Okay, 50 pounds. You click a button, <coughs> hey, your site is up. <laughs> Easy. <coughs> okay. You didn't hear that from me. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing that you should do is monitor file changes um, with an automatic tool like myjumla.com or uh, admin tools, PHP file change scanner or RS firewall. Basically, if a hacker attacks your site and manages to get in, something will change. If you have a head warning that something changed, you can fight it back. Have you ever heard of uh, distributed denial of service or DDoS? Which is that um, a hacker has access to a botnet, thousands of infected computers with a virus, and he asks all of those computers to try and access your site all at once. Your server cannot count the load, and the server dies. So your site is down. The only way to protect against that is having a hell of a lot of bandwidth available uh, and a CDN, which is, which is something like a Cloudflare CDN would do for your site. There are other services as well. Cloudflare is tested sequence. Uh, if you have a site that is in risk of this kind of attack, it's worth investing in one of those services. If you have a small site that re receives minimal traffic, it's an overkill. It doesn't work. Anyway, in spite of it all, sometimes you get hacked. What do you do? Keep calm. It's not the end of the world. It's something that you can fix. It's just a site. There are instructions to fix your hack site. Uh, we have a page with those instructions that I update regularly, which is called Unhacking Your Site. Uh, you do have backups, so you can restore your site, right? <coughs> You're using an automated service that monitors file stages and allows you to unhack your site like my children, right? Uh, and most importantly, you have to read the instructions before you get hacked. 
it's like pilots. You know that pilots have nice checklists that they follow in case of emergency. Why do they have those checklists? Uh, the human brain is a very funny thing. Uh, when you're stressed, it shuts down. When your head is high, someone can ask you what's your name, and you will be like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> if you have read the instructions beforehand, you have a good idea of what you have to do. And then you go back to the instructions, read them one by one, carry them out, and you will unhack your site. If you're waiting to read the instructions after you get hacked, sorry, you'll end up using WordPress get hacked even more. And then <laughs> <laughs> this, this is something that I have seen happen. One more thing, security is not a project. It's not something that you install or set up once and then forget all about it. Security is a process. It's something that you have to do. It's like brushing your teeth. You don't brush your teeth once and then it's done. You have to brush your teeth every day, otherwise it's as good as having never brushed your teeth. Uh, if you're not willing to do security properly and invest time on it, don't do it at all. There are cases where leaving aside with some devices, um, potentially getting it hacked and then putting it back online if it gets hacked, is cheaper than spending the time and energy to do security properly. This is perfectly acceptable. It doesn't mean that if you have a site, you should make sure that it should never get hacked. If it's super expensive for you, don't do it. Just make sure that you're making an informed decision. In other words, what I'm trying to say is don't do half-hour security. Either do it or do not. <coughs> do or do not, there is no try. Yeah. And now I believe we have about five minutes for questions. Meanwhile, that's the URL where you can uh, download the presentation. I give out the inputs at this last day, day, 16 UK. That's the thing you have to note down. <coughs> and at your convenience. Yes, right. Sorry. I'll rephrase my question. But as you were the original developer of the two factor authentication for Gmail, would you know if it's feasible? to create a, a two-stage login so that the username is parked and password is entered first and then the two-factor authentication code. Okay, that's oh. a different authentication method called two-step, which is something like what Google does. Well, the reason I ask is because if you've got running TFA on, on Gemma's site and you say, for example, one password, you can't log in like that okay. because... I'm, I'm using one password. Okay, I must be doing something wrong. Uh, it uh -huh. submits. Oh. Well, I mean, oh, and if you're using all the submits, fills in the username and password, and then you 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 know, know. and using what to submit. Yeah, uh, this step is not feasible in Joomla because our user of it, say user, has two states: yes or no right. yes. You would need to have a try state. Okay. Yes, like it should be yes, conditionally logged in, uh, fully logged in. Conditionally would mean that you could only do certain actions. Uh, this is a massive backwards compatibility change. Because right now, when you're calling user authorize, it will return the Boolean. What happens if you're half loaded? Yeah. Okay. So it, it wouldn't it would take an entirely different ACL system. <coughs> okay. It's something that we had discussed around 3.1, and that's why we ended up with two-factor, not two-step authentication yeah. for Zoom 3.2. So just turn off auto submit, auto lock. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Do, do not have it present automatically. Yeah. Other questions? Your ISP backs up your your area, your 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 server, your your um, and you get hacked, are they not in possession of something that would help you restore your, your site or site to its original state? So, uh, when your host is backing up your user account, not your site, you're backing up your user account, um, 
they do that for mostly for resilience. If their hard drive gets fried, they should be able to restore their server. They're not doing it to help you unhack your site, but they may be able to do that. It depends on when you figure out that you got <coughs> If you figure it out immediately, which is the case in pretty much never, uh, if you were to mythically uh, do that, you would call your uh, host and call them, hey, I, got, I just got hacked. We restore my site. They would restore your site. This date from uh, two days to one week before. This is the the period of their backups. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on your site, that may be acceptable or not. In a site like mine, where I constantly have new users added, new subscribers, new content because we have support, etc., uh, that would be unacceptable. It meant that I'm, I, I've lost a week of business. That's the end of it. <coughs> that, that's not even an option. If you have a site where you add content once in a blue moon, it's okay. Actually, if you have a site that you only add content once every three months, and you get hacked anywhere uh, in the last two months, and you tell your uh, uh, your host, do you have backups from uh, three months ago? They say yes. It's okay. Most likely they won't. So it's a corruption. Um, do you want to, to leave it to chance? That, that's why you should be taking your own backups. That, that's, the, that's the whole idea of having your own backups. Yeah. If you see what, I, what I've seen with hacked sites is that the hacker installed some backdoor sometime, let's say, in April, and they decide to do something about it in October. Almost six months later. So the possibility of your host having backups of your site from at least six months earlier, and those backups being of any use to you, no. How do you know if someone has a set this back door? What your file changes? See? <laughs> That, that's the thing. When they do that, you will see that there is a new file. And when you try to analyze that, it will start raising all kinds of red flags. Uh, uh, any decent file scanner will go, oh, we've got something here. Mm. This doesn't look like a file that should be in your site. So you know, you've got that. If you do not want the file changes, good luck. You'll only find out when it's too late. Then you will start trying to unhack yourself. I believe you raised your... Okay, yeah, so um, what's about, you, you mentioned about um, support sites and, and, and giving, I, I, I've done this before and actually given passwords on a secure site and then they just copy the <coughs> email and it's it stuff on open email and so I don't use those anymore. But is, you, you also mentioned about getting support from, uh, from developers because you put a component in the last for access to the site. Mm. So you actually, I mean, you, and including FTP, I mean, now what I do is I actually just give access just to the component because otherwise you're giving access to everything and you don't actually know. Uh, if, if you only give access to the component the developer, probably they won't be able to help you. Uh, there, I do not know of any component that the developer can log into your site do something just on the component, not even on the menu or anything else, okay. and provide any kind of meaningful help that's not in their documentation. So you either have a useless developer or a happy component. <laughs> but my, my point is, though, is that if you're giving access, and your site will often have a lot of confidential information, especially yes. for, for clients, you, it's, you know, I mean, I suspect probably under data protection, you, you shouldn't be doing it. This, this is why everybody has a terms of service. Sorry. Everybody has terms of service. Yeah. So I have terms of service where I say that I'm not going to take that information and give it to someone else. If I violate it, it's as if I'm violating a contract. But I mean, so you can you can come after my ass. Yeah, well, that yes. Yeah, well, you probably can't though. It depends on your ass. I mean, if, if you've got a developer who's in Russia or India or wherever, I mean, are you really going to do that? I mean, the the, 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 the practicality is what you can't. You, you won't. Well, that's that's your that's your risk analysis. Yeah. If right. you do. Hold on. 
you do not trust them to log into your site, but you trust them with the code that's running on your site. Well, that, no, that's, 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 that's what I mean. This, that's what I mean. You've got to, if you're, if you're, if yeah, you're so, so this, this, this goes to what's up, what you're installing. If you do not trust the developer fully, do not run their code on, on, on your site. I, 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 I agree. It's, it's yeah. really difficult. That yeah. clone so la last question because I don't know if we have the next session. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So I have two questions. One, so one question I barely have time for one. It's, it's, um, it's one question. Yeah. So for how long do I need to keep up tech apps? Uh, for how, how far back? Mm -hmm. So I would be able to restore backup when I see the recycled happen. Yeah. I'm talking about websites that uh, I change <coughs> once in three months. Uh, if your website is changing in frequency, I will say keep keep a day, keep a, keep a monthly backup for the last year. Keep one year backup for up to five years. Wow. Okay. That's not bad. It's twenty two backups. It's what? It's twenty two backups. Oh, no. Still, uh, it's it's 22. It's it's nothing. If if you can't afford to keep 22. No, I can. Happen. I just didn't know that. Yeah. That's well. Yeah. You 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 will see. You'll do that. <laughs> okay, guys.